It's round seven of Norway Chess, and the tournament has really caught fire. So I'm going to look at the game between the leader, Richard Rapport, and playing black, Sergei Karyakin, who has hit back over the last couple of rounds. So this one was always going to be interesting. Would Richard really press with the white pieces, or is he going to play a bit safe? Remember, in this tournament, you get three points for a win in the classical game. Um, and if it's a draw, you get one point and the chance to get an extra half a point if you win the Armageddon. So a win in the classical is definitely worth it if you get three points. So it's a Nimzo Indian. Knight f3. Well, that keeps options open for white. You can still play bishop g5. You can still play with g3. You could possibly play with e3 or queen c2. Castles. Now Rapport plays queen c2. So at this moment, d5 covers the e4 square. That's important. And bishop g5. So this kind of exploits the fact that this bishop has come out here and isn't sitting on e7. h6. Well, got to take now. And a3. So both players clearing up the pins in the position. So takes, takes. A bit of a simplification. So solid start for both players. And here, Karyakin decides to take on c4. So queen takes. This one is threatened. Uh, this position um, has been tried by quite a few players. Uh, knight c6 is a possibility to play e5. Karyakin goes c6, a solid move. g3 from Rapport. Well, the bishop certainly could be good on g2. Or perhaps another square. So knight d7. Here's the point. If bishop g2, then e5 comes. And actually, that really liberates black's position after this pawn exchange. You know, there's going to be knight b6, perhaps beforehand. And this bishop will come out. And you can see that pawn on c6 does a really good job because it blunts the bishop on g2. So, But Rapport didn't play bishop g2. Instead, he played bishop h3. And this is a new move in the position very unusual and somehow typical of Rapport's style. He's not afraid to be very creative. Of course, the bishop is just biting on the pawn on e6. But the point is that it prevents e5 or discourages e5. If e5, white can take and take on e5, pawn up. So if black isn't playing e5, then it's going to be hard to liberate the position. If white maintains the pawn on d4, if white castles, puts the rook in the middle, uh, and black is still cramped, then white has a very, very nice middle game with that bishop looking rotten. So Karyakin decides to break out with c5. So, uh, I mean, I guess castles is possible but then b6 bishop b7 black should be okay so rapport decides okay i'm going to take the pawn on c5 b6 so this is very enterprising play from Karyakin. he's offering a pawn if if pawn takes well black does get quite a lot of play the king is still in the middle watch out for this pawn so queen b5 but then knight d5 now watch this. Castles. A5. I like that move a lot. With the idea of bishop a6. And, and that pawn kind of nails these two pawns down. Excellent compensation for black. So nice creative idea from Karyakin. But Rapport avoids that with c6. Now if knight c5, then just rook b1 guards that pawn. And actually, that could be quite pleasant for white. Black still needs to get rid of that pawn. So c6 just played. So Karyakin decides, OK, I want, I want my money back. 
And I want to get my pawn back. So queen takes b2. Castles. The knight's attack, so knight c5. So material is even, but we've got quite a tense situation because that pawn, well, is it a strength or is it a weakness? That knight stands beautifully on c5, supported by the pawn, and, and that, of, of course, breaks communication here. So white needs to play really precisely here in order to, well, actually not to be at a disadvantage. I think, you know, this is this is very finely balanced. You know, that pawn could disappear. Well, this, you know, this moves like bishop a6 coming as well. Tricky position needs to be calculated very precisely. Rapport played knight d4, guarding that pawn. But, you know, the, the, the knight is not yet supported. Um, so it's, it's a tricky decision to make. And here, you know, e5 is quite a principled move to drive that knight away from supporting here. But tricky stuff. Bishop takes bishop. Rook takes knight f5. So threat to check here, you know, the queen can come over. Really hard to say what's going on. The computer thinks that e5 should be played, but I can understand why Karyakin didn't go for this. You know, he has a very, um, very good sense for danger, you know, very sensitive antennae. And, you know, as we all know, a knight on f5, when... Black's king is castled, the black's king is on g8. He's very dangerous. Instead, Karyakin played rook d8, attacking the knight. And now e3. This, again, this had to be calculated so carefully because that allows bishop a6. This is the game continuation. Skewer. Queen b4. So here, Karyakin played knight d3. If queen takes queen... Bishop takes rook. Actually, black wins in exchange. But Rapport had foreseen that actually you get tremendous compensation. Well, more than that, you're going to win material back. For example, here, here, you just mustn't play c8 too early. And rook c1, threatening to queen. Um, and if knight c8, bishop b7 wins the rook. I mean, that's just one variation. Black can do better than that, but still, uh, it would be fantastic compensation. So that's why knight d3 was played. Queen takes, knight takes. So that knight has been dragged a little bit out of position. It's better on c5, of course. Rook b1 hits the knight, comes back to a4. So decent position, might come back here. But white at least has been able to maintain the protection of the pawn on c6 and that Pawn on e3 supports the knight, but the knight could still be driven away by e5. So f4 is an important move. And you can see that for the moment, everything is hanging together. And if the knight goes back to that fantastic square, c5, a4 is really strong. Followed by a5, and these rooks start to look very very powerful indeed and you know there are always interesting tricks with c7 as well so rapport is starting to get control here knight c3 hits the rook rook b2 knight d5 hits the pawn on e3 no problem king f2 so everything is still hanging together by a thread it's really important knight c7 okay now the knight comes back passively it's pretty clear that this pawn can be held. I mean, bishop g2, I think, is a decent option here. Stops the rook coming to d5. I mean, to me, that looks like a very natural move, actually. Restricting black, holding the pawn. And then you can decide whether, for example, to play a4, a5. But Rapport's choice is, I find, really interesting here. He selects a plan which... Uh, I find really unusual, and it's and it's kind of <coughs> um, very typical of him. He finds unusual plans, 
So he played rook d1. Now if rook d5, activating the rook, then white doubles on the d file. Okay, the rook is quite nicely placed behind the pawn. But the knight is about to move, and then the rook will come to d7 or d8. So let's come back here. So rook d6 instead. Rook bd2. Rook d8. So the knight is pinned, but king e1. Still looks slightly strange what Rapport is doing. In fact, it works out beautifully. And here's another key variation. If knight d5, which looks kind of menacing, looking at these squares, knight c2 is a very annoying pin. If rook takes c6, knight b4 hits everything. Of course, there is a pin there. So it seems to me a lot of Rapport's uh, strategic ideas are underpinned by exact calculation. Bishop c4 played. And now he's ready. e4. The knight has been protected by the rooks. And this pawn is ready to advance. So what he's going to do is he's going to drag the bishop back. He's going to play e5, which actually traps the rook. <laughs> f6. So this is countering this plan of e5. So e5. But now black's pawn on e5 is vulnerable. Lots of exchanges. Black can't avoid that. And white wins a pawn. Still some way to go, but obviously, you know, a big gain. And important that that pawn on c6 is held as well. So how do we win? Let's have a look. h4. I really like that move. Because it means if these pawns are squashed, then that's going to be they're going to be another target for white. So while black is taking care of this pawn, there's potential to attack on the king side. King e7. Knight g6 check. King d6. e5 check. Opens up the bishop's diagonal. King c5. And now the knight comes in. And actually, this knight is so pesky. I mean, I, I think black's defence was, in any case, really difficult. Um, but this is fun for white now. Because the knight has the possibility to play to c8. Or to come to f5 as well. So let's see what happened. King here. Knight c8. King takes, knight takes a7, so Rapport is still a pawn up. Now the knight spins around the other way. And king c3. King b5, so king takes knight, king takes bishop. Bishop comes back, knight f5 check. Bishop h3. Interesting. Just holding that knight on this square for the moment. And after h5. I mean, black can't do much here. Um, the knight comes back to e3. So you can see that bishop was put here to attack the knight. Which really has to come back to blockade. But of course it's a passive square. Bishop g2. Controls this square, stops the king coming in. G6. Now those pawns are target, uh, targets. A4. King here. Knight c2 check. That just pushes the king back. And king c3. So A4 was played to control the B5 square. And now this knight can come back here, or perhaps e3. King d6. And Karyakin, by this stage, was running seriously short of time. Bishop e4. It's this pawn, so now it's obviously completely lost. So now it's two pawns. 
little tactic. So king takes knight, king takes bishop, bishop here, knight b5. So now white is ready to push the pawn in a moment. There we go. Bishop here. And, well, it's obvious that, that black is lost. I like this move, by the way, because these squares are controlled. So black's king can't come back to defend. And the game finished like this. In fact, it's a kind of tilt function, but I mean, obviously, black is lost, whatever. Uh, but the game went knight c6, and that is another pawn in the back. And here, Karyakin resigned, obviously. It's, it's just too much. But take, bishop takes bishop, you make a queen. So there we go. Richard Rapport maintains his lead in the tournament. In fact, all the classical games today were decisive. Um, Carlson beat Tari and Fiduzja defeated uh, Nepo. But anyway, Rapport stood in the lead. And what a fantastic game. It's that combination of tactics and strategy that uh, I find very, very appealing in Rapport's style. Um, you know, very, very creative. Precise opening. Bishop h3, very interesting move, a very unusual move. And then later on, this plan of doubling on the d-file. And then dropping the bishop back and playing e5. Very nice stuff. There we go. Three rounds to go in Norway chess. Don't forget, like, comment, share and subscribe. And do consider supporting us via PayPal or Patreon. Links down there in the video description. Thanks for watching.